Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. Coming up later in the show, we've got another cool barn find. But first, let's get to the news. Henrik Fisker abruptly resigned from the car company that he started after unspecified disagreements with the executive management team. We suspect he resigned rather than get fired. Fisker Automotive is in deep financial trouble after a string of unlucky breaks, and no doubt the financial backers of the company want drastic changes. You know, it's very difficult to start a brand new car company unless you come to the market with some dramatically new or different technology or new and dramatic process. Fisker relied on styling to break into the market, and that is just not enough. Even so, we are sad to see him fail because you've got to admire him for how far he got. One of China's largest private companies plans to create a network of natural gas stations in the U.S. for heavy-duty trucks. According to Reuters, ENN plans to build 50 stations this year alone in the U.S. It teamed up with a small Utah company called CH4 Energy, and the two created a joint venture called Transfuels. They plan to build around 500 stations in the U.S. And that's because there's a lot of interest in the United States of running trucks on compressed natural gas or liquid propane auto gas because truck fleets can save a boatload of money. We're going to be doing a lot of reporting on this in the weeks to come. International, the big truck maker, now offers the Transtar Class 8 Semi that runs on CNG. A cost calculator on International's website shows that a fleet can save well over $150,000 in fuel costs over the life of a truck. For fleets that run their per mile operating costs to the penny, this is a windfall. Check out the link in today's show notes to see how much truckers in your area could save by converting to natural gas. And speaking of semi-trucks, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety in the U.S. is calling for stricter requirements for underride guards on the backs of trailers. The agency tested trailers from the eight largest truck manufacturers in the U.S. and Canada. A 2010 Chevy Malibu was crashed into the back of the trailers at 35 miles an hour at three different offsets. Full on, 50% overlap, and 30% overlap. At full width, every trailer passed, and only one failed at 50%. However, with the 30% overlap test, only one trailer passed. In 2011, 260 people died in the U.S. in these types of accidents. Pollution continues to be a problem in China, so the country is trying to get the highest polluting cars off the road. There's a new standard coming May 1st that says if a car fails a mandatory inspection three times in a row, it has to be scrapped. Cars are required to be inspected once every other year for the first six years of ownership, then once every year for the following four years, and then they have to be inspected every six months. If someone does not get their scheduled inspection, they risk getting a fine of about $32 and three points on their license. You know, this barn find segment where you send us the cool cars you see is really starting to grow on me. And this next pick is tremendous. Gordon Garside sent us this car turned terrarium, which he discovered on some semi-rural private property north of Victoria, British Columbia in Canada. Gordon knows what it is, but to you, he says it isn't uncommon to see these vehicles running around at local antique car shows. But as he notes, based on the size of the tree, this car has not moved in some time and will not be going anywhere anytime soon. Tell us what you think this is in the comment sections of today's show and we'll reveal its identity on tomorrow's edition of AutoLine Daily. Coming up next, Nissan is playing around in Silicon Valley with what look like toy robots. Actually, it's all about autonomous cars. You know why I pulled you over, ma'am? 
I need you to recalibrate the Doppler shift on the return signal. Radar's on the frisk. Do Sonata drivers know something you don't? The Sonata from Hyundai. Every time you turn around, another automaker is announcing it's getting into autonomous technology. Nissan is the latest, and it put out this video to explain how it's developing this technology. Seven small robots could help change the fundamental way we get around forever. These little chick-like creatures made by Nissan Motor Company are called Eporos, or zero-emission robot car concepts. They run on electricity and use algorithms to move in harmony and in solitude. This is the first time they visited the United States. Uh, this robot is very cute, but uh, this uh, inside this robot is very awesome. Engineer Susumu Fujita created these robots in 2009. He says the robot's behavior is inspired by the way fish swim. They move in schools, in streams, and avoid obstacles. Uh, this algorithm is very simple. The technology in these robots is similar to what will be used to build and perfect the autonomous car. Already the Eporos can follow the leader, even if the leader is me. I'm proud of this. With their piercing eyes, smart senses, and cute movements, these robots seem almost human-like. What are you thinking about? <laughs> so, it's interesting. Fujita is so protective of his creations, he considers them like his children. He's even given them names. He named the red one after himself. The blue one is named after his colleague, who's another innovative engineer involved in creating these creatures. We developed this robot, so actually, this is my kids. <laughs> the technology in these robots already helped inspire innovation now seen in the company's cars. Technology like intelligent brake assist and forward collision warning are features somewhat similar to the robots. This is very useful prototype for us. Fujita promises his children will keep making him and Nissan Motor Company proud. These Eporos are pushing ideas of what's possible onto a new fast track of the future. Hey, join us tonight for AutoLine After Hours when our guest will be Klaus Busse, the head of interior design at Chrysler. This is going to be a fun show, so tune in to catch me and the auto extremist Peter DeLorenzo for some of the best automotive discussions that you can listen in on. And that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.